Hello everybody, welcome to Also Rusty Buckets. This is my first time recording a video in a week, so this should be fun. Just got back from my trip to the mountains where apparently I mispronounced it, Appalachian, Appalachian, I don't know which one it is. I don't, honestly don't care. Uh, but yeah, that's that's what's been going on with me and that's why there's not been a post-game recap in a while, but this is the first post-game recap back. Uh, let's just get into it. You're not already subscribed to the channel and drop a like on this video. Uh, so first things first, I just have to briefly, briefly talk about uh, the Bulls. I'm not going to harp on it too much because I talk about them enough as it is. Horrible loss to the Timberwolves, not the Timberwolves, the Grizzlies. Um, they just lost to the Timberwolves the day before, so that's why I got those confused. Uh, and this is in spite of John Morant having a really bad game because while John Morant had a bad game, Zach Levine and Nikola Vucevic had bad games as well. And I should say, uh, Ja did have 10 assists, but he just shot very poorly. Um, yeah, there wasn't too much to say about this one. It was just a pathetic effort from the Bulls and uh, one of the worst Kobe White games that I have seen. Like, you'll see in the box score, two for eight. And honestly, that doesn't even spell out how bad he played in this game. He had some horrendously bad turnovers, missed point-blank floaters. It was just it was a bad, bad game. I'm very tired of this guy being on my team. Same goes for Lowry Markkinen, who played 16 minutes, and honestly, that's too much. Um, but yeah, that was that game. I'm not gonna not gonna harp on it too much. So I have to put a lot of effort into talking about Mavericks versus Sixers, and I'm gonna talk plenty about Warriors versus Nuggets. So as for this uh, this uh, Jesus Christ, can I speak? First time back in a week. Gonna have to get used to it. Um, for this Sixers versus Mavericks game, uh, this game was interesting at the start because the Mavericks were doing something defensively that was kind of working against Joel Embiid. Now, he was getting to the line, as he pretty much always does, but what the Mavs were doing is they were playing uh, Boban Marjanovic at center and having him guard Embiid, and really he wasn't actually guarding Embiid. He just stood right at the basket while Embiid caught on the perimeter, and he let Embiid go and take his mid-range pull-ups or mid-range face-up shots. Uh, and he, he did it multiple times. He stepped in to take a mid-range shot over him three possessions in a row and did not they did not drop, uh, and it was working. But he gradually figured it out and got to the line. Uh, Marjanovic only ended up playing seven minutes. For that seven-minute stretch, he defended well, but uh, Embiid got right back to his usual dominant self. He finished his game with 36 points, and he got to the line 15 times. I only missed one free throw. Goddamn, Joel. Uh, this game was, a, as always with Ben Simmons, kind of frustrating because the thing is the Mavericks are not all that big outside of um, Bogdan or not Bogdanovich, Marjanovic. Uh, a lot of a lot of viches here. That, viches? It sounds like I'm saying bitches. Uh, and yeah, because of that, I was like, Ben, attack. And he had one possession where he did it on Luka, and it was pretty much the only time he showed any level of aggression for the entire game. And it's the same, same old story. Like... My biggest issue with Ben Simmons is not the jump shot. Of course, him being a great jump shooter would make an incredible difference. But what's frustrating is I don't expect him to be able to be a good shooter, but I do expect him to be able to be a really good finisher and attacker of the basket, but he just simply refuses to do it on a regular basis to do you know more than average 17 points max. So that's Ben, a uh, good playmaking game from him, and then this very good defensive game. And on the Mavericks side of things, uh, unfortunately, outside of Luka, they had just uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. And 7-3, Tim Hardaway Jr., Chris Porzingis was not playing this game. Uh, Jalen Brunson, his box score will look fine, but he made a lot of dumb plays in this one. Uh, a couple of bad shots, things like that. Uh, and no one else really came to help help Luca. Uh, Jalen and Dorian Finney are the only other guys who scored in double digits outside of Luca. The Mavericks finished with 95 points, meaning the Mavericks are one of the best offenses in the league. That's definitely a down game for them. Now let's talk about Warriors versus Nuggets. I have been talking about the Nuggets quite a bit and giving them quite a bit of praise, but they're now on a two-game losing streak, so there's there's that. But I gotta talk about Steph in this game. So this game going into it. Uh, Steph was about to overtake Wilt Chamberlain for the most points in Warriors franchise history. He has a little over, uh, up almost 18,000 points, actually. Uh, yeah, he did that, obviously, because he was 18 points away. Uh, I think he I think he finished it. I think he, I think he did that because um, he had a 53 in 35 minutes on 14 for 24 shooting on t and 10 for 18 from three. Now, actually, 
Uh, he was shooting significantly better. There was a point where he was like 14 for 20, uh, but he put up a couple of shots late that did not go in because he sat for a good chunk at the start of the fourth, and it was a sizable enough lead that it made sense, but apparently Steve Kerr, not even apparently, I know he does this. They, they have a rotation sometimes where Steph doesn't play like half of the first quarter because he plays, or not the first, the fourth, because he plays like almost all the third uh don't really agree with that decision because i'd rather just have steph play out the final 12 minutes of the game rather than the final six and just have him play half of the third but regardless uh the warriors win this one steph 53 points it was ridiculous also it was frustrating because the nuggets did actually get themselves back in this game uh but the warriors seemed uninterested in getting <laughs> steph the ball and this is an issue a g overarching issue with steve kerr as well is that He's still running this team like it's some deeply talented team and not like a team that should be basically purely going through Steph. Because while Steph had uh, 53, he only got seven more shots than Andrew Wiggins. And it's like, that's not how it should be. Also should be said, this is a very good game from Draymond because his jump shot was going in. Uh, he hit two three-pointers. He hit a mid-range shot. Uh, and when his shot's going in, he's pretty damn good. Seven assists. Typical stuff, especially you'd expect in a game where uh, Draymond plays well. Uh, Kent Bazemore shot 12 shots. And uh, Warriors fans do not like Kent Bazemore. And I understand why, because Kent is one of those guys that's like, you could be a valuable player if you stopped doing dumb things, like acting like you're Kobe and taking post-mid-range shots or just fadeaway mid-ranges, pull-ups, all that stuff. He, he, he does too much very often. And it's frustrating. Uh, but we're, yeah, I'm trying not to go too much on the negatives here. Steph was ridiculous. And the title is this um, This video is probably going to be uh, Steph is a cheat code or Steph doesn't make any sense. Because there was one three that he did on Compazzo where he did a, like a, a little hesitation, a step back on Compazzo. And he shot the three. And when the replay, he did look... But it in in the actual play, it looked like he turned around, like he he shot it and started running away without an ounce of hesitation, like he knew that shit was dropping. It's like that literally looks like something out of a video game. That doesn't make sense that a human being can do this, like at all. Um, I also want to talk about Michael Porter Jr. because he has been uh, doing well for the Nuggets lately. This is another good game from him. Not an outstanding game by any means, but. 24 and 9 on good splits although he did he was missing his threes in this one also i uh, should mention jamal murray got hurt uh, later in this game uh, hopefully he is good i didn't actually see the injury i just heard people talking about it that's the negative side of watching games on mute is sometimes you miss things because if you're looking away from the screen for a bit maybe the commentator says oh when jamal murray looks like he's hurt and i was looking away for that bit there's no audio uh, and that happens quite often. Sometimes I think I should turn on the audio to make these videos better so I can have more context, but then then I'd have to listen to NBA commentators that like 98% suck. So uh, it's the give and take, I suppose. Jokic was good in this one. Pretty standard game from him. Uh, Campazzo played, you know, he tried on defense. Uh, and Campazzo is a, a like, shockingly good defender for a guy who's like 5'8", 5'10", max. Uh, was not able to make much of a difference, though, being that he is that short. And r rarely does Steph have an opportunity where he could take advantage of his size shooting the ball-wise, but there it is right there. Uh, Aaron Gordon in this one was not as amazing as some other games, but it's still good. Uh, his three ball, he, he was one for two in this one, but the one that he missed was pretty fucking ugly. Um, also, Steph almost hit a three to end the third quarter that I was like, if he hits that, I don't even know what basketball is anymore because he had Jokic on him on a switch. There was a couple of seconds left. He did a step back where it was, a, it was basically a step back to nearly the logo. Like who does a step back jump shot to the logo? And it almost went, I swear to God, that shot almost went in. And I was like, if you hit that dude, I, what is basketball? Cause it doesn't make any fucking sense. Um, yeah, that's, that's not too much eventful today. I, I mean, there actually kind of was some eventful stuff, but I just simply was not, uh, watching uh, the other games because i can only watch so many games at once also uh i saw i was talking in locker room before this which by the way go follow me on locker room and we can have chats on there uh there's some guy that said De'Aaron fox like averages 40 for his career against the pelicans well he had 43 in this game so <laughs> uh yeah he has something against the pelicans though he did shoot the ball 30 times so i guess he just wanted to keep that mark going i don't know um yeah that's it all right uh is there anything i'm forgetting i feel like this is only this is my first time in a week so i'm a little rusty 
pun not intended. All right, bye.